Hey guys, okay, so let's talk about stencils in this video, okay? A beginner level stencil is a silhouette, and if you're just starting, I would suggest using a silhouette stencil. Silhouette stencils are just the basic outline shape of any image you want, draw it out, and then, or print it out online, and just cut it out and then fill that in with a solid color like black. An example would be how it is solid black and it's just and they're little birds but and this camera doesn't show it as well as I would had hoped that it would but or it's just lighting. Let me move the light. I don't know if you can see it but you know there's birds sitting on a wire there's the tree with the heart on a string hanging down so it's like love bird kind of thing but silhouettes are fun you can make a lot of things with silhouettes so don't knock them until you try them um, and if you're interested in the more advanced like uh, stencils where uh, you see a lot of people make the faces of things and they use uh, multi-layer stencils until you get to uh, until it looks really really real and everything those stencils tend to be made uh, mostly, mostly made um, with computer programs like uh, your Photoshop or GIMP or some kind of image manipulation type program to make uh, those stencils. I'm not going to get into those on this video. We're just going to cover silhouettes and uh, where you get them, how you find them, because I know that when first starting out, a lot of people it, 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 it seems hard on where you would find these, but it's really not that hard. You find them online print them out, um, uh, copy them or trace and print them out or whatever on your favorite paper, uh, cut them out and use them. And they're very easy to do. There's not a lot of uh, brain work into making those stencils. Uh, it, all of that is, uh, all, all the imagination is set on what you do with those stencils and everything. And the wind is blowing everything around here. Set everything back. Where are you guys? And uh, then you have different uh, type of, hang on, this wind is just being a pain to date. Stop it. Okay, and then you have different type of stencils where you can do a layered stencil where you just take an image and then you break it down into the different sections of uh, each color or each shadowing of the color and, and things like that. So an image that has four colors you would make four copies and cut out each one of those colors and then lay them down one layer at a time starting with the probably usually the biggest color the color that sits in the back like so you the white of the eyes you wouldn't do the white first because whatever you would do the skin color of the face or whatever would just end up covering up those eyes so you want the eyes to be last or close to last and things like that if you guys get what I'm saying so Stencils aren't too hard to make. An example here is one of the videos I made for uh, Timeless Timelines or something. It's a pretty old video, skeleton uh, couple, they're holding each other and everything. And so here's the, the, this is the stencil for that. So lots of white dots, right? Those are all the things it takes to hold these things down. <laughs> And, uh, but took the image, and it's hard to tell because everything's been painted on and everything, but I took the image, <coughs> made it out, and, and then cut out the image itself from the paper. This is the first layer that we're going to end up doing. So actually, the image has uh, black, white, and uh, some gray in it, so I did a three layer. And... Uh, I could have done probably about five because there's different uh, shades of each gray and a lighter black, so more, eh, whatever. But I went with a three layer. It came out pretty well, and uh, it was just something I wanted to try, and I actually didn't think it was going to come out that cool, but it did. So uh, I, I cut out the image and set it aside, and that's layer number one. Now, the image itself ends up actually being last, something that we use to cover it the image up before we finish our painting and so that way between the 
ribs here and everything. When you finish your painting, all the color goes through, and it just seem, makes it seem like it's a uh, see-through. The ribs, you know, they're, you guys get what I'm saying. So, number one, and then I copied another image of the uh, same thing, so let's make sure it's scaled the same size, and cut out all the white of the image. And then made another copy and cut out all the black. Now the black one's a little more hard to see because it's glaring through everything, but we'll put it down over here. You guys can see it. But all the black and so all the black sections of the skeleton. And then that's the third layer. Once we're done with that layer, it'll all be put together. Let it dry. Set that over the top of it. And then finish your painting everything out around the outside of the painting. So after the painting was done, we would set that on top of it that weigh it down make sure you get everything down real well you don't want any blow under of anything but and then when you finish your whole painting through it all your color you use for the background is going to go through the ribs and and so that's the last piece of the uh, multi-layered or layered since I mean multi-layered is more than one layer but there are different types of multi-layer stencils and I really like those and for a lot of things you would just maybe keep that cut out and you wouldn't have all these little detail other things to paint through and you but you would use it to put over it after it dries and then finish it and everything rather than necessarily like I did on this one like I did on this bird one here I actually did the whole painting and then I put the stencil down and made them black and everything so there's two ways of doing it you can do the stencil last or you can do the stencil first uh, for this one, I figured the stencil should have been done first, um, just because of the having to go through the ribs there. So, but that, that's kind of how you make a multi-layer stencil for uh, some things. You're just finding the different colors and then breaking it up. And then there's just this two-layer little like stencil where we the red of the rose, the green of the stem. Really simple, you know. Find your find you a flower you like or something other something more realistic if you want cut out each of the layers of the colors and print out or draw out however many layers uh, equal to however many colors you have if you guys are understanding that that is you know I'm not very good with uh, describing these words if you watch some of my other tutorials I'm uh, get tongue tied and lost for what I'm trying to say but I hope you guys are understanding that there uh, another option also for finding those things if you don't have a computer or do uh, to print things out or find those images is uh, for making some multi-layer things are actually coloring books if you're into uh, things like uh, comic books and things like that you can use comic books as well and everything just trace out the image if you're not good at drawing otherwise just kind of look at it draw it by eye uh, make it your own and draw it out and then just make more than one of copies of it so if your guy that you're drawing out or your figure you're drawing out has seven different colors to it make seven different uh, copies and then cut out individually each color of each uh, these cars man they're loud <laughs> uh, so individually just cut out each color uh, from each separate paper you know so you have layered stencils and but honestly if you're just starting out we're going to cover silhouettes here in this one. Please start with silhouettes. Give them a try. There's lots of really cool things you can do with silhouettes. Um, another uh, piece I have is one that I made a while back. There we are. We got the, the Santa Claus kind of thing. The moon's behind the clouds. Uh, got some reindeer. So just little silhouettes. Nothing that goes too fancy, but when you use them inside, a, uh, you get a a nice idea and the imagination you're using for your paintings you end up with a really cool uh, ending picture uh, on another note well we should discuss actually how you would cut them out and what you would use for that so I'll do that first before we head over to the computer anyways we'll do that real quick what I use uh, there are different things you can use 
and we'll go over them real quick right now. Okay guys, so what you would use to cut out your stencils is uh, most people I hear about they like using these little box cutters you know and then the lines there for snapping off to a new blade but uh, anyways enough about that but uh, these box cutters and they come in different sizes this one's actually pretty wide if you uh, to see how wide it is for your finger it's a little ridiculous and it makes it hard to really get around some of the edges some of them I mean it's it's not a bad choice use them be careful using them uh, they do come in thinner sizes you can use those but normally an exacto knife it's actually exacto but an exacto knife and the blade come out here you unscrew it and you pop in a new blade and everything uh, they come in different brands this isn't exacto this is general some I found at a hardware store and little exacto blades and they make for more precision when cutting so you just get a better turn than you would with this bulky bulky blade one little wrong move and you end up with that little like you end up with a slice and you ripped up your stencil and you have to start again and I don't know as long as you be real careful with that they work and they make thinner ones as I said they make ones that are a little thinner so that's what you would use and this mat here is a cutting mat so it's a cutting mat it's green they're like rubber whatever I forget what they actually call the mats uh, other than cutting mats and they make uh, your blade they make your blade uh, last longer so they don't uh, if you're just cutting on wood or on the top of the table or anything cutting on top of a piece of carb I mean you know you're gonna dull the blade out quicker or break the tips of the blade especially if you use an exacto knife they have a, such a fine little point on the top on the tip that uh that uh they can't snap right off so but those are some of the things you would use there I would get one of these they come in different sizes you don't have to get a real big one you can just get one that's to make them about the size of a piece of computer paper and while we're at it here this is a stencil that I printed out on computer paper basic regular computer paper nothing special everybody says you can't do that it bleeds through and everything well here we are after a while it does start to bleed through uh, it doesn't end up really on your painting it doesn't I've never had a problem with this one just as long as you do light coatings and uh, stay far enough away just do real light coating give it a second to dry do another light coating it won't seep underneath it won't go through and but after the first use this paint hardens up and becomes like a protective layer anyways regular paper works just a little harder to cut out this is a silhouette of a Jedi. See, there's a Jedi, and there's this lightsaber, and I just I don't have that because that's separate for it. But the silhouettes can be fun, as I was saying. There's that. There's those birds I was talking about that we were discussed. Put it down so you can see it, right? <laughs> and this nice little heart to get a perfect shape. You can always draw them in by hand, the heart and stuff. But uh, once I start silhouetting, I get carried away, and I, uh, I just silhouette everything. And here's my rose piece of the rose it's the rose top and then just kind of run with it and then there's a real big heart that's used for different things as well I mean silhouettes come in handy making a lot of different things and uh, if anybody's interested to understand how much uh, silhouettes I actually do uh, and uh, used to do I'm trying to shy away from them now but I still do them I actually have this whole bin is nothing but silhouettes. This bin is full of silhouettes. So, <laughs> so that's silhouettes are fun, guys. You know they're they're a lot of fun. But let's get over to the computer now. Show you where we get them and get done with this video because it's taking way too long, right, guys? All right, let's head over. Okay, guys. So here we are. Open up your favorite search engine. 
For this one, I'm going to use the search engine. You can do a lot of this on your phone as well. And we'll discuss that more towards the end of the video. So right now, open up your search engine. We're looking for silhouette. So make sure we type in silhouette and make sure we click images and find all kinds of silhouette images of uh, whatever you want. Now, a silhouette is the outline of an image and then we fill in the center with one solid color. That's a silhouette. You can make your own silhouettes. You can find them online to use. Here are some examples of uh, silhouette pictures so you get an idea of what you can do with your art. Here's another one with the elephants and stuff on the African plains. So and whatever you want for your silhouette just look, look for that type it in so for here we're going to use Charmander as an example right click save image make sure it's a JPEG or a PNG I've had trouble with GIFs but you can always give that a try yourself if you'd like make sure we click save and then open it up in your documents I'm using Microsoft if you're using something else open it in your favorite image editing program for here I have by default I have the Microsoft Paint down here so by default it opens in Microsoft Paint I like Microsoft Paint because it's very simple all you gotta do is click the bucket make sure it's white and there we go now the reason we do this and get rid of most of the black is so that way when you print this out you are not using a ton of ink because all we need are the outlines of the image you can alternatively use the erase button right here on some images the bucket doesn't work fully you have to use the erase button you can erase if you want to get rid of a lot of the black you also have the option of select tool select a lot of the black and then just get rid of it and just anywhere and everywhere you can and try to get rid of as much black as you can to where you just have the outline the idea is to save a lot of the ink most images you can just use the bucket tool and then go in we don't really need his mouth or anything we're just using the outline here for the silhouette and every little bit of ink counts because ink is a little expensive so make sure we click print on this program you have a print preview you can see the size this is typically the size of your paper so just get a reference of how big your image is going to be and scale it down you can scale in here in the page setup and change the uh, scale properties if you want to mess around with that I found an easy way in Microsoft Paint it's just enlarge the paper itself You can also select the image and resize it here. Now if you go back and check it out in print preview, the image is a lot smaller. And if you take out a sheet of paper, your printer paper, and check it out, you'll notice that uh, you can compare in size that this is going to be a lot smaller than a whole sheet of paper, obviously. And you have room to fill in with other little silhouettes and everything and save on not only ink but paper as well alright so back here let's discuss we want a silhouette you can also use Pokemon stencil say we're looking for a Pokemon still we're still using that as an image uh, as the uh, source for this video and here are some little stencils you're gonna cut that out like a silhouette paint in that solid color and then cut out on a different sheet the black with the red and things like that and you have yourself little stencils you kinda of get the idea on how to make a stencil here once you once you really get into it you start thinking oh duh I know what I'm doing here I got this okay and it's just it's confusing at first guys I completely understand once you get into it it's really easy you have already made stencils for you I don't really like them they they kind of look a little dull in comparison to uh, 
other stencils you can start to make yourself, but they are in here. So you just type in stencils and type in whatever you're looking for, be it Pokemon or Star Wars or whatever you're looking for. And do the same thing with Silhouette as well. Here I'm just showing you a couple of stencil ideas. This one here is really, really weird. Okay guys, so that's how we do it on the computer for silhouettes, uh, how we find our images and stuff. Uh, if you're really not good at drawing, not everybody's great at drawing. You can paint, you can do nice art, you can make an awesome scenery, but uh, when it comes to drawing out a figure, you're just really terrible at it. And that's fine, not everybody uh, can draw. Drawing is, is an art form all of its own and everything. But uh, if you don't have a computer, you can always go down to your local library. Uh, most libraries are free, um, if not all libraries, to use the computer. Uh, printing, on the other hand, usually costs some money because you know they have to pay for the ink and the uh, toner and stuff like that. And they have guidelines, uh, some rules set out on what you can or can't print uh, and stuff like that. But talk to your library and see about uh, what you can or can't do there and see if that's an option for you. You can always use a memory stick or a flash drive uh, memory card and if you have a computer, print it on home, at home. Um, you can also use your phone if you have the micro SD memory card in there. Find your images, save it to the phone, put that micro one into the bigger, uh, the uh, little bigger memory card and take it down to your, uh, and the same thing with the computer, put it on the memory card from the computer and take it down to your uh, local print shop and have them print it out and you can get it sized there to however big you want it and that works really well if you got an image that you want. Uh, wall size. You want something as big as uh, that you can put on a wall, a mural or something like that. So that's also an option. But uh, as for doing it on your phone itself, you can actually just draw them out, trace them out on your phone. Uh, the screen is only so big, so size the image as big or little as you can up to the size of your screen and then put your piece of paper over it and trace it out. And that works if you want like a little tiny silhouette or something. And uh, last ditch effort for people who absolutely don't have any way to make them it's an option can't get no bigger than your phone though but it's still an option and lastly there is you can put the paper on your computer just tape it to the screen and trace it out real lightly just size the image on your screen however big you want your image to be and trace it real lightly. You don't want to ruin your computer screen, so do it real lightly. Then when you take it down, just go back over all the lines to make it darker for you. And then uh, just trace it out uh, however many times you need it. And if you're wanting to trace something out, a option, a, an idea for that is actually to make you a light box. And a light box is simply just take a piece of glass or clear uh, plexi plastic or something like that and make yourself a little box. You can use a cardboard box. Put a light in it keep the glass or the plastic thing on the top of it and uh, trace it out. Uh, put your paper image on it, put your paper on top of it and then trace it out uh, however many times you need it to uh, be traced out. Uh, if you're using glass topped ones, be real careful that it doesn't, uh, the pressure you're pushing on doesn't shatter. I don't want anybody to get hurt, but that's also an option. Uh, stenciling and stuff is real easy guys. I do hope you guys try that. Alright, so that's the video guys. I hope it was helpful to some of you. I know that stenciling when you first start out is really uh, confusing and difficult to uh, some people. Uh, I was a little uh, perplexed myself on it when starting, but it's actually really easy to do. And once you start with the silhouette, the rest of the stencils come to you really easily. And uh, unless you're doing the uh, multi-layer ones where you get the 10, 20, 30 layers and stuff like that and, and where the so many layers that the image looks like it's a photograph and uh, but that's actually used uh, you use a program to make those stencils and everything uh, you can make them by hand if you're really good um, but you can use a program I use GIMP or Photoshop uh, to you make those there are probably other ones that uh, other programs you can use but those are the two that I know you can make them on so you can give that a try as well but if you're just starting out start with the stencils as you've seen you can make a lot of really cool stuff with stencils if you look down my videos you'll find a lot of things are just uh, uh, silhouettes of stencils but silhouette stencils you make a lot of cool things with silhouette stencils 
and if you look down my page, you can find a lot of silhouette stuff going uh, uh, throughout the, all my videos. <laughs> uh, they're a lot of fun, and uh, hang out with me. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, we try to do all kinds of different things from silhouettes to the uh, multi-layer stencils and stuff, and I'll try to help you guys out along the way as I learn it, I'll help you learn it, and we can have fun and grow together in this art form. And uh, it'll be a lot of fun, guys. Make sure you like the video for me, smash that like button, share it with somebody if you think somebody could use uh, the help as well. And as always, guys, remember, keep creating.